Hey everyone, welcome to this month's question of the month. I'm David Kyle. I answer a question every month. As you know, if you've got a question, burning anatomy question, go to yoganatomy.com forward slash my question. I will do my best to get to it and answer it as soon as possible on a video. Uh, this month's question comes from Kyle. Kyle says, my question is about Utkatasana and specifically movement in and out of the pose. I suppose the topic can be uh, broadened a bit to describe the most efficient and mindful way to move in and out of a squat. Uh, I'm of the mind, supported by one of my comments, one of your comments, he says, I assume that that's me, from several years back, that the eccentric contraction of the hamstrings is a significant factor in stabilizing and supporting the move into Utkatasana. Do I agree? Do you agree? Um, I guess. Kyle, are you asking me if I agree with a comment that you said I made? I, I, I guess I could change my mind, fair enough. Um, on the flip side, what muscles actions do you consider the prime movers in rising from Utkatasana to say Urdhvahastasana, basically returning back to standing, like in a modified Surya Namaskar B? Thanks for being willing to weigh in on this, uh, all my best. All right, Kyle, uh, good question. Let me go step by step. Um, God knows what comment I made a few years back about Utkatasana and the hamstrings. <laughs> I, I, I'll assume your recollection is correct. Um, you know, let's step back for a second. This is, um, anatomically speaking, there's a lot of complexity when you squat and come back up. It, it's not a hard thing to do, of course, but in terms of hip, and when I say hip, I mean um, the acetabulofemoral joint, your actual hip joint where the ball and socket is, the dynamics that happen there, down the femur, and then, of course, at the knee joint. And the reason I say that is because you have the quadriceps on the front, which cross both the knee and the hip, and hamstrings cross both the knee and the hip, and then you have the gluteals. Let's, uh, we'll just refer to them as a group. When you go down into a squat and come back up out of a squat, of course, gluteus maximus is also going to be involved. So you mentioned eccentric contraction. So for anybody watching the video, just to clarify, um, you have concentric contractions where a muscle during its contraction phase on a cellular level, the overall muscle is also shortening in its distance. However, there is also um, eccentric contractions where during cellular level muscular contraction, the overall length of the muscle is increasing. So the muscle is lengthening during a contraction. You do this all the time. If you slowly lower yourself into a forward, standing forward bend, your hamstrings are lengthening, and yet they are also contracting slightly to slow down the flexion. They're resisting flexion while allowing it to happen. Another way of saying the same thing. Uh, so we all do this all the time. Uh, if you need more than that, dig into the books, look it up on Google, no problem. Concentric, eccentric contractions. Eccentric is spelled E-C-C-E-N-T-R-I-C. -E -E okay, now, because you've got, let's go back, quadriceps, hamstrings, crossing both joints, um, there's, a, there's a particular dynamics that happens there. So as you're lowering into Utkatasana or a squat, um, your knee is bending, your knee's flexing, right? Which me and you're, you're controlling that movement. You're not just dropping into a squat. Therefore, quadricep at the knee end is doing an eccentric contraction. At the same time, hamstrings extends the hip joint. Your hip joint is flexing. Therefore, hamstrings are also doing an eccentric contraction, working synergistically with the quadriceps to lower you into the squat, 
in this case Utkatasana. On top of that gluteus maximus, very powerful hip extender, is also going to eccentrically contract to slow down the pace of the hip flexion at the same time. Therefore, when you stand up, the same muscles work in the opposite way. They then concentrically contract, quadriceps at the knee, hamstrings at the hip, and gluteus maximus at the hip joint as well are concentrically contracting in order to bring you back up to standing. Um, that's it in a nutshell. So in terms of efficiency, um, you don't, the good news is you don't need to tell each of your muscles to do this. They just do it based on the resistance that they sense. If a muscle has no resistance, gravity takes over every time. It's pretty consistent. Okay? If you want to slow a muscle down, you want to slow down a movement, that's the only intention that you need. I want to slowly lower myself into Utkatasana. All the right muscles are going to contract. You don't need to specify. You don't need to focus on any particular one. Okay? I don't recommend practicing that way uh, many years ago. I've been asked the question actually many times. Oh, how do I think about anatomy while I'm practicing? I don't. I don't. I try not to unless I'm struggling with something. I'm thinking about the technique perhaps on a pose that I'm working on. Other than that, I wouldn't be thinking anatomy. I would be I would be thinking about the totality of movement and anatomy. Okay, so I'm not sure how you went down this rabbit hole, but hey, I think I answered your question. I hope it was clear. All right, Kyle, um, anybody else? Of course, if you have a question, go to yoganatomy.com forward slash my question.